Hi there, Tom Wojay once again with his misbehaving mouse to do some Illustrator techniques. Um, looking at working as precisely as we can in Illustrator. Uh, we're doing some infographics here. Here's an example of a simple microphone uh, infographic that we'd use to communicate that concept to a client, for example, if we're going to do some icons for software or for a logo. Um, it looks fairly complex. It looks like there's a number of elements to it, but it's actually quite simple. So we're just going to start right into it by uh, selecting everything. I'm just going to delete that. Create a new document, 500 points by 500 points. And as always, under the view menu, I'm going to hide the bounding box and turn smart guides on. Okay, we're going to start by drawing with a line segment tool. You might think that a rounded box would be the way to go here. Um, the line segment tool gives us a little bit more uh, options just for scaling and sizing the thing while we're working on it and it's actually going to be easier to work with than a rounded box. Starting with the very center of the document, smart guides are turned on, it'll let us know when we get to the center of the, of the document. Holding down the option key on the Mac or the alt key on the PC, click and drag straight down or straight up and you'll see that we're extending either on either side to create a line segment that's exactly centered uh, horizontally within the document as well as vertically. Okay, so uh, to create that shape what we're looking for is I'm uh, just going to grab, bring up the stroke palette and uh, we need to turn on the stroke options here so when you click on stroke just click on this little fly out here and choose show options. Uh, that was hidden off of the, the screen recording so I apologize for that but you can get the point. Now we're going to increase the weight. You can do this really slowly or we can just hold the shift key down that will allow us to jump by increments of 10 points to get the desired size. Now you notice that the the caps at the top and the bottom of course are square. We're going to turn those into rounded caps and then we get that nice rounded shape that we're looking for. And uh, I figure 90 points not quite enough so let's just keep going. Uh, maybe 100 points. Nice round number. Let's see where that takes us. Okay, now what we're going to do is, this is a little bit too too tall for the microphone, we're going to grab that bottom anchor point with the direct select tool and then we can use the shift key and drag that up. And this one we're going to eyeball, it doesn't really matter, you can use the cursor keys if you want, sort of adjust that, get the right microphone height, and away we go. So that's the going to be the, uh, the, the main body of the microphone. Okay, uh, we're going to get some little dots in there just to help with the uh, the illusion that this is a microphone and you might think that we're going to need to draw some circles around here. One of the really neat things that we can do is uh, we can uh, use the stroke and a dashed line around the stroke to actually create the shape that we're looking for. Um, we're just going to try this using the appearance palette and um, see if we can do this all in a single shape. That is not going to work. So, never mind. What we're going to do instead is we're going to take this shape and we're going to offset that path. So, this is a 100 pixels uh, stroke, so it's 50 pixels on either side. We're going to do exactly half of that, so we're going to offset this path uh, by 25 points. So, we're going to take this shape we have right now and um, we're going to copy it. And so, Control C and then Control C. F to paste a copy of that in front. Um, now it doesn't look like we've done anything here, but we have in fact done that. We've got, if I just grab this and move it out of the side, you see there's actually two copies there. So we're just going to take that path and object, path, and we're going to outline the stroke. And that's actually going to turn that stroke into an actual shape. And the reason we have that shape is because we want to now offset that. We're going to take that object menu, you know, path, offset path and we're going to offset that by minus 25 point. If you turn the preview on you can see what it is we're creating. We're insetting it actually um, so that we've got a path that's running around exactly halfway from the center to the outside. Press OK and away we go. Now we don't need this path on the outside anymore so I'm going to select it and delete it. We still have that other shape. That was the original stroke. I'm just going to go to outline mode for a minute. You can see this is actually what we have. We have this one shape. That's the actual shape that goes on the outside. It's still got the 100 point stroke with the rounded caps on it. And then this is the shape that we created using the offset path. So back to preview mode. Now the reason we created that was so that we could actually add these dots using a dashed pattern uh, in the stroke palette. So to make this work we want to switch that from a filled black filled object to 
a stroked object. So I've just swapped my fill and my stroke over here, and then we want to change that to white. So just use my color palette and change my stroke to white. All right, so now we've got a one point stroke, which is going to grab the stroke palette. I'm going to increase that. I'm not exactly sure what the right number is. I'm going to assume that maybe 25 point would be the number to go with, given that's the size we've been working with up to this point. We'll see, that might be too big. The beauty of this technique is that we can really change this on the fly. So the, the key is, we're turning rounded caps on. Actually, let's keep rounded caps off so you can see what it does. Keep that off, we're gonna turn the dashed line on. The dashed line is really great for creating train tracks and all kinds of lines, but really what we wanna do is we wanna just turn this into a dotted line. So the technique for creating a dotted line is setting your dash to zero and then we set a gap, whatever we want that gap to be. We're going to have to experiment a little bit. I'm going to try 50 point gap to get started with. You can see Illustrator can't really do a zero point dash, so it's given us little tiny lines here, but as soon as we turn our rounded caps on, it's going to put a rounded bit on either side of those points. That creates the dots. Perfect. So 25 point stroke weight, uh, dash of zero, a gap of 50, which is double that amount, and look at that, we've got dots coming all the way around here. Now we can just sort of play with this. We say, well, you know what, I think I want to make those, those dots a little bit smaller. And away we go. Look at that. So I actually didn't mind the 25 points. Seemed to be mathematically kind of the right number. And now we're just going to go ahead and create the rest of the microphone. So the next shape that we're going to create is we need to create the, uh, the handle or the I don't even know what you would want to call that thing <laughs> that holds the microphone in place. Uh, it's going to be a combination of a rounded corner box at the bottom and a more square box near the top. We already have our template for the rounded corner shape, and that is uh, the shape of the microphone itself. So let's start with that. So we're going to go back to our original path, and once again, we're going to uh, copy that. Control C, Control F to paste it in front. Doesn't look like we've done anything, but again, there's a copy right in front. And we're doing that because the object path outline stroke is a destructive operation. That's going to destroy the original line. That's why we created a copy, because we still want, I'm just gonna go to outline mode to show you. We still wanna keep that original line in there. So I've just uh, copied it and pasted it, and then we've outlined the, the copied version. All right, so back to preview mode. So we're just using this shape here to be able to create our outset shape. So we're just going to go and now choose object, path, offset path. And this time we're going preview on. We're going to go out in the opposite direction. So let's go out by, see what 25 points does for us. And that's probably pretty good. But you know what? I'm going to do 50 points. Eee, that's pretty large. Well, let's go with that. Okay, 50 points. So uh, remember, offset path does leave a copy of the original path in place. That's non-destructive, so we need, need to delete that. So select it with the arrow tool and delete it. Okay, so this is going to be used to create a stroke. So we're going to switch the, the stroke and the fill. Uh, I used Shift-X on the keyboard, by the way. It's a really nice little hotkey for doing that. So Shift X swaps the fill and the stroke and gives us just that stroke. So now we're going to go ahead and set ourselves up with a, let's go with a 25 point stroke. Okay. So now we've got a rounded box that goes all the way around the outside. We really want, what we want is a, we want to sort of cap that off here, right in the middle, come across. And maybe just for the aesthetics of it all, keeping it a little Bauhaus, we're going to keep those, that, that shape rounded. So we're going to go and grab the rounded rectangle tool. And we're going to draw our rounded rectangle. And um, we're going to just draw it from the center. And the only reason I'm using the center here is that I want this thing to still be centered uh, horizontally as well as vertically. So I'm going to start with the center point, and I'm going to draw out to the edge, and then I can draw straight down. And Illustrator, pretty smart, realizes I want to keep that aligned. And so then I can draw straight down. Don't even need to use a shift gear or anything like that, and it's going to stay aligned as long as smart guides are turned on. If you don't like the, uh, the amount of rounding on your box, before you let go of the mouse, I've just let go of the option key, but I haven't let go of the mouse, I can use my up and down arrow keys. And you can see as I'm pressing the up arrow key, it's increasing uh, the amount of rounding on that. 
So let's just choose something that we find aesthetically pleasing. And then without letting go of the mouse, holding down the Option key again, it's going to bounce us back out. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to let go. All right. Now the key is here. I want to line this guy up so it's actually lined up to the center of the object. So I'm going to grab this path, and I'm going to just drag it down. And Illustrator will let me know when we intersect. Ah, OK. That's going to be a little bit troublesome here. So what we need to do, Illustrator was snapping to the wrong thing. So this is a really important point about Illustrator. Illustrator pr gives preference to wherever your mouse cursor is when it's snapping. So in order to snap this top segment that I'm highlighting right now with the mouse to the center point of this object, I really need to grab that top segment near the center. So I'm going to grab it from here and I'm going to drag straight down. And that allows me to then use my mouse cursor and snap it to this. Now, the only reason we're having a bit of problem is because it just so happens that I've drawn this thing so that actually the bottom part centered aligns to that. So we didn't see the snapping there, but it is snapping now to the center of that shape. All right, so we have two shapes now. We need to combine them into a single shape so that we get the rounded part of the bottom shape and then these rounded corners and this sort of more rectangular part of this shape here. To do that, we really want to keep just the part of these two that overlap and exclude the two parts that don't. So we can select both of those shapes, and this is where the Pathfinder comes in handy. So we're just going to go and grab our Pathfinder palette, which you can also, oops, that's transparency. Uh, let's grab the Pathfinder under Window, Pathfinder. There it is. And we're going to use the Intersect mode, which is the third uh, shape mode from the left, and click on that. And that keeps the, just the overlapping part. So we've now created that perfect shape right there. All right, to create the base of the, uh, of the microphone is going to be dead simple. Once again, we can grab the line segment tool. Pen tool will work fine. Line segment tool is just a little bit easier to work with. And we've got a nice point here that we can snap to, so we don't have to worry too much about being precise. We're going to use the smart guides and snap to that anchor point. Click and drag straight down. This one we're going to eyeball a little bit. That's going to become the base of the microphone. Uh, we can use our path palette increase the weight. I've got the shift key held down so this goes a little bit faster. And we're going to bump that up to 100 points. Looks like it's a little bit too much. So we're just going to bring it back down to maybe 70 points. In fact, 75 points, nice round number for this thing because we're working kind of increments of 100. So that's 75% of the width of this. That'll be nice. And then finally to create the, the base, start again in the center with the line tool or the line segment tool still selected in the center. Click Option key and shift, and then drag outward. And then we're going to have to eyeball this one again. Obviously, that's way too much for the line weight, so we're going to bring that down. Something again, increments 25 point is the right number to use to create that smooth infographic look. Everything looks harmonious, all the line weights match up, and that's it. If you're not happy about the width of your base, you can easily click on that and then press the free transform tool over here. E on your keyboard. Just remember to hold down the option key so that whatever you do to one side, you're going to do to the other side. So you can just sort of fine tune that base to wherever you want. And if you're feeling particularly uh, ambitious, you can use the transform palette. And we can say, you know what, I really want that width to be, uh, that, we don't want to change that. So I want that width to be nice round number. 100 isn't going to cut it, so let's go with 125. And again, that's just about working with nice even increments to make the whole thing a little bit more aesthetically appealing. There it is. Our infographic is done. If we were going to turn this into a logo, probably the next thing I would do is I'd select the whole thing, and I would use Object, Expand Appearance, and then Object, Expand, Fill and Stroke, and turn that into a complete object. And then finally, a little bit of Pathfinder action on these guys here. Now it's important when you're using Pathfinder to do sort of this uh, uh, refactoring or rationalization of your objects. In the Pathfinder palette, Bring down the options and turn on Pathfinder options. What you want to do and set in the Pathfinder options is remove redundant points. That's just going to make sure that if there's ever two points that would be overlapping or any points that are sort of not necessary, uh, they would be removed altogether. I don't think that that would actually be the case in here, but it's a really good practice to always remember every time you launch Illustrator and you're going to use Pathfinder, just turn on remove redundant points and press OK. And then we're going to use the Unite. And that creates a nice, single, unified shape. And away we go. Infographic done.